If you've seen the other videos in this sequence, you are no doubt quickly becoming a master of the time value of money. We have seen how to value individual cash flows and other periods of time, as well as how to grow perpetual streams of cash flows, and that really only leaves us one pattern of cash flows left to discuss. We still need to talk about multi-period cash flows, but ones who are finite in nature as opposed to perpetual. We call these annuities. But there's one special characteristic of annuities that we need to keep in mind, and that is that all of the payments need to either be the exact same amount or growing or shrinking at a constant rate. If you have a stream of cash flows that is inconsistent, then you don't have an annuity. You have a group of individual cash flows, and you need to value each of those separately and aggregate them in the period of question, whether it's the present, future, or past. If you want to learn more about annuities, though, stick around. An annuity is a finite stream of cash flows that all have the same amount. In this video, we will assume all payments are equal to each other. What kinds of situations might we have that fit into an annuity framework? Well, the annuity can be of any length of time. It might just be two payments, or it might be 2,000 payments. The only requirements are that it is more than one payment and less than an infinite number of payments, and that all the payments have the same value, and that those payments are spaced equally in time. So we could easily imagine things like loan contracts or consider a mortgage or maybe a car loan or rent payments or insurance payments, and all of those would be examples that would fit the bill. In fact, if you were considering inve investing in a rental property, you would need to compare the benefits and the cost of the project. Since the cost is likely to be mainly upfront in the purchase price, while the benefits are likely to stream in each month, we will need to move all the payments, both the inflows and the outflows, into the same time bucket and net them against each other. Let's say you're considering buying a condo that you plan to rent out for $2,000 a month. Also assume that you require a 15% return on these types of investments. Finally, assume that this condo has a 30-year life in your estimation. What should you be willing to pay to buy the condo? Well, we'll use this formula here, where the present value of the repeating stream of cash flows is equal to the cash flow divided by the discount rate, which looks like a perpetuity but then we have to subtract one minus one over one plus the discount rate raised to the teeth power, where T is the number of years for the annuity. Let's do an example. You are trying to figure out how much you should spend at age 60 on an annuity that will provide you with $3,000 per month for 10 years, starting at age 65, if your cost of capital is one half percent per month. We have several things to consider here. First, what is the value of the annuity starting at age 65, which will be a value expressed in time period before the first payment, meaning at age 64 and 11 months, because we always do that P0, C1 thing. The present value always is computed the period before the first cash flow. So if the first cash flow happens at age 65, you can see the present value will sit in time bucket 64 years and 11 months. Then what will that value be when you have to pay for the annuity when you turn 60 years old? Well, let's start with the formula. C is $3,000. R should be a monthly rate that equates to a stated rate of 6% per year. Keep in mind that that is a monthly rate. The only other thing we need is T, which is 10 years. But here's where we have to be careful. We have 10 years of monthly interest. So we need to express T months, not 10 years. So 12 months a year times 10 years is 120 months. Now, let's plug these values into the formula. And we get... $209,101.57. What does that mean though? That means that at age 64 and 11 months, you would have to pay $209,101.57, except that in this example, you have to pay when you turn 60, not 64 and 11 months. So we need to bring that value back by four years and 11 months to get the correct answer to the question. Well, that's just a simple present value problem. The future value now is $209,101.57. The number of periods now is 59, which is four years and 11 months stated in terms of months. The discount rate is one half percent per month. It's $116,250.88. That's the price you'll have to pay when you turn 60 to buy that annuity that will begin to pay you $3,000 per month for 10 years starting at age 65. You're getting pretty good at these problems. See, practice makes perfect.